You're listening to episode 733 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Love Your Enemies, given on the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2020. Today we continue to hear and finish up the Sermon on the Mount, the famous Sermon on the Mount. And so far, it's been something we've heard that's challenged us, but not like today. Today is some of the hardest reading to listen to and to put into action. Now, let me offer, before I uh, get into the detail of the scripture, we're not being called to be doormats. Imagine a bully on a playground. Should you just let that bully pummel you every recess? Is that the loving thing to do? Because Jesus is all about love and mercy. In fact, no, we should probably go to a principal or a teacher to make sure that this bully is held accountable. And just maybe and hopefully that bully will change his or her mind. I think I've shared this before, but when I was a junior high student, another student would have gone on the bus and would threaten me. I was the new kid on the block. I moved from Medford to the Portland area. That's their turf, not mine. So I was a scrawny little blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid, and the kid that was bigger eventually assaulted me on the bus. He said, you better not tell anybody. Oh, it's too late, I told him. (laughs) I did not offer and strike back with fists. There's no way I would have won anyway. So I promptly then, and I wasn't really cool about this. Of course, I was very upset. Went to the principal's office, shaking and shared with him what happened. Fast forward 20 years almost. High school reunion. (laughs) Guess who walks right up to me when I show up? I don't even know who this person is. We've changed so much. In grade school, you look wonderful when you become an adult. You're going to be so different looking, you may not be recognizable. I didn't know this guy. Who is this person? Bill, come on up here. I want to help you out here and show you here's some food. And it was incredible hospitality. And then he told me his name. And I heard, had not heard that name for 20 years. By the way, he did stop bullying me after I went to the principal's office. So we're not to be doormats. Because if I had then just let him continue, who would be next? Right? What is the loving thing to do? Is to stop the aggressor. So Jesus tells us, and it's funny because I've heard this, somebody quote, well, Jesus said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and that was their justification. Like, did you actually read the Bible? Yes, Jesus did say that, to correct it. That was the law. We are called to go beyond the law. And this is as you join the church, candidates and catechumens. We are called as Catholic Christians and in Christians in general to supersede the law, to go to the heart, la corazón. That's what matters. Why? What's the point? ¿Qué es el punto? Jesus was recognizing the law said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth because prior to that law, it would just accelerate. Think of the people as in, this, in the Bible as infants 
And as they grow older, they become adolescents. And then Jesus appears. As adolescents, you're finally able to go from like pudding to a steak. The basic of the law was trying to mitigate acceleration. So what would happen before? Someone would, would punch me, let's say back in the day, and then I would punch them back. And then they would then take out my sister. And then my, my family would come out and take their whole family out. <laughs> their family, whatever's remaining, would take out my whole village. And thus wars occur. Jesus recognizes this, says, that's what you've heard. And just for justice sake, at this level as children, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth, so it does not accelerate. But Jesus then finally opens up to the fullness of it all. And he says, but I say to you. And at that moment, the people listening to him are thinking, who in the world does this guy think he is correcting the law? He's more than just correcting it. He's giving us the fullness of it. I tell you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. And he gives an example. This is an amazing example. I think we miss it in our culture. Keep in mind, the culture of Jesus' day is, is one of honor. The greatest harm you could do to someone would be to dishonor them. So, it says, when someone strikes you on your right cheek. Now, 90% of people are right-handed back in the day as well. So, Timothy, if I was going to hit you in the right cheek, how would I touch your right cheek for me? Which one is that? Which right, which your cheek? Can you touch your cheek for me? Right there. Yeah, if that's your cheek, how can I, if I'm going to hit you, how do I get to your right cheek? Pretty tough, right? So what option might I have? I have two. I might try to back slap you and hit your right cheek. This is an incredible dishonor to a person to be back slapped. It's not about the hitting. It's the dishonoring of the person. And suppose that the person was left-handed. In the day, you would use your left hand to wipe your bum. Imagine that. That would also be incredibly dishonoring. Not that it just hurts. It does hurt. But it was a dishonoring. So if someone does one of those, Jesus is saying, okay. And people lived in cultures that were highly developed with all kinds of advanced interactions and relationships, extended families. Like in our Hispanic and Latino community, a lot of extended families, but go to Jewish culture, even greater extended families that would be living together, parents with their children, the grandchildren, grandparents, great-grandparents, cousins, distant cousins. And it would be hard to do anything privately. So when someone does get hit once, people might recognize, what? And then the person, as Jesus is offering, offers no resistance and gives them the other cheek. Okay, go ahead again. And they'll slap you again. And now the evil is seen by everyone. Isn't this genius? So the first one might have been hidden, possibly. The second one is not. In fact, the person who's been humiliated now offers themselves out to be further humiliated. What would happen? Likely, the family will come to their aid. But if not, the aggressor is now publicly outed by his own behavior. There's a few people that did this in our recent hundred years. One named Gandhi. And because of him, Britain pulls out of India. He didn't just do no violence. He was very forward about what he did. Another gentleman, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., walking into Selma, a peaceful, not just standing there, he demonstrated. He walked into the heart of racism, which elicited the evil, and everybody saw it on TV. So those are applications of Jesus' turn the other cheek. It's not you necessarily run, but it was an action with the aggressor. So the aggressor has a moment to stop and think, to repent. Remember, the Lord is kind and merciful. It is for this reason the Catholic Church, when we look at the justice system, we're against the death penalty because no longer does a person have the opportunity to repent. We want to 
have a penal system that allows them to reform themselves. That's the hope in the heart of the church when it comes to the penal system, jails and things like that. And then it says, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's what Jesus, he's remembering. Remember this law. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Your neighbor would be your people in your house, your clan, people you knew. And he says, though, blowing it up now. But I say to you, again, the audience is thinking, who is this guy who thinks he can change the law? He says, love your enemies. Do you know I loved the, me- the person that tried to assault me when I was in junior high? How did I do it? I gave him a chance to change his ways. He had to pay a price, but I didn't hit him. I did not return evil for evil. Justice was served. I was secured for safety, and he was then able to change. You know, a hard part for me, though, was I saw him the next day and the next, or next weekend and next weekend at church. He was like five pews in front of me. I wanted to jump over the pews and tell his mother, do you know what your son is doing? Something tells me she already knew, looking back on it. But I wanted revenge. See, we're not called to seek revenge. But see, the wisdom of God is beyond ours. And these examples that he's given us are trying to change behaviors, trying to make evil clear and those who are perpetrating it to change their hearts. Loving your enemies may very well mean drawing a line. He gives an example. He says, pray for them. Pray for those who persecute you. Again, it doesn't mean that you should be a doormat. Domestic violence is not acceptable. You are not to continue with that. Abuse, you should be getting out of that. When people come to me, I offer help. Usually it's talk to a good lawyer. Or maybe go to the principal. Do something to stop the evil. There may be some way for that person to change their heart. Imagine, who is your enemy today? Who is someone that really bothers you, you don't want to be around? Someone that makes you angry? Someone who's been unjust to you, unfair, mean, hurtful, and fill in the blank, evil, doing evil. What is the greatest thing you could do for them? Pray for them. That's a start. Look what Jesus did. What did he say on the cross when he was hanging there? His persecutors nailed him to a cross, which was the ultimate in humiliation. By the way, our crucifixes... Quite, don't quite give it fully. He had nothing on. They gambled for his money, his, his clothes, and he was in his birthday suit, you could say. He had nothing on. He was totally naked. What a humiliation for him. He knew this was going to happen, and he walked straight into it. Who is it that forgave those persecutors. Jesus on the cross. He says, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. I believe this. I believe that people that are doing evil are so malformed in their hearts and minds that they do not know fully what they're doing. Who in their right mind would do that? This former bully was when my school reunion occurred, was quite weathered in his body. He had been through quite a bit between when I saw him last and then. And I could just imagine, he's been through very difficult times. His behavior likely, don't know, has caused lots of wreckage in his life. And he's been making a turn for the good. I didn't take him out. I couldn't, right? Right? But some people might want to. Some people kill others. Some people murder others. 
Is there a better way? See, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is the fullness of the law. It's going beyond the law. It's divine wisdom. And so when something happens and you have an enemy in your midst, a coworker, a family member, a former friend, or whomever, start praying for that person and ask for divine wisdom. Ask Jesus, what would you do here? What are you calling me to do here? Give me the grace to do it. Someone may need to be stopped. Someone may need an opportunity to realize what they are doing and come to their senses. Remember the story of the prodigal son? He goes off and spends all the money of his father, all the inheritance, and he comes to his senses. Let's pray that we ourselves, maybe we're somebody's enemy. Or he's thinking about other people. Maybe we've caused harm. Might you be like that gentleman that I bumped into who then served me? Might you then go serve someone else? Someone who you've had a, a war with. Smile. Show them compassion. See what happens. They may change their way. They may go, huh, maybe I can be friendly again or we can start again. I've seen this many times. I've had arguments with people. Sometimes there needs to be a time away. Cool heads need to calm down. And then we start again. Could you begin again with somebody else? Could you be the start of a new relationship? This is supernatural, my friends. Our nature is revenge. Our nature is fallen. When someone yells at you, don't yell back. Be calm. Be clear. Pray for the strength to do it. This is how we proclaim the gospel. The gospel doesn't get proclaimed very much when we're screaming and yelling at somebody. I haven't seen it work yet. <laughs> but when we are loving and compassionate, walking with people, encouraging them, trying to give them another chance, how many times should we forgive? I think you know the answer to this. God bless you. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills Podcast. As always, if you have any questions or comments, just go to my website, fatherbill.org. That's F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And there you can find out what's going on my on my uh, social media accounts. And you can send me an email directly from the main webpage. Until next time, may God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye.